today what we're going to talk about are eyes. Now, everyone knows that eyes are, because you have eyes, um, you guys know that your eyes are muscles. So what muscles um, do is they're not bones, they're very flexible. So flexible uh, flexibility needs to be needs to be shown. It needs to be emulated um, on a two D on a two D surface. So again, the formula is um, drawing three D subjects on two D surface. Um, they are windows. <laughs> uh, you'll see. And um, so the fact that we have to draw muscles that move, we have to draw eyes that that are not the muscles that are not in length or, or or stretched down. Thigh muscles are very generally very easy to to draw. You know where they are. You know where they end, and you know how they work because they're all very they're very lengthy. You know how the crotch works in that area because it's very it's a very lengthy muscle. It's very easy to memorize. It's not a shape. It's, it's practically a 2D shape to represent something um, and the way it functions up and down. So the thigh um, muscles help the leg move up and down. Certain parts of the muscles all around are wrapped around it. The thigh itself is a sort of a triangular triangular shaped, uh, it's essentially the under, under shape is, is, a, is a rectangular uh, shape, not, re not triangular. But the eye is difficult. Why? Because it's a sphere. It's a constant sphere um, on which different muscles um, lay on it in a spherical way. So a lot of the time people forget to establish this spherical uh, surface area. So as everyone understanding what I'm saying, um, other muscles on the body are very flat while the eye muscle is one entire, they're not as spheres exactly but they're spherical. Um, so you have to you have to constantly establish their spherical way. When they turn away um, the, 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 the pupil um, acts in a spherical way, um, the way I told you guys before, a bowl, and the way you shade it is, is the way a bowl would be shaded, uh, the way the bottom of a bowl would show if the bowl was tilted away from you. Um, the way that the skin wraps around it on three-quarter view is different from the way we see it if the skin was wrapping around it on a, two, um, on a front view. The way the lashes wrap around on a three-quarter view um, are, are perceived differently than they are in a front view, so they wrap around in this kind of in this kind of direction instead of this or the anime style when you just have two but again you have to know the rules before you break them and you break the rules when you break rules it creates style so today I'm gonna show you the rules you independently it's up to you to break the rules if you wanna break the rules you have to know which rules you're breaking if you're gonna go um, you know all out breaking rules, what you're going to look like is you're going to look like a very amateur artist. And that's how you look amateur, when you don't know the rules that you're breaking. So, I break a lot of these rules. Um, I like some, I don't like the others. I don't like 100% realism, because what's art for if it's not for drawing what you want to imagine, creating your own world. But there are some things that I wouldn't, if I didn't know them, I wouldn't be the artist I am right now, if you can call me an artist. Um, so today I'm going to show you the rules. Right now I'm drawing an eye in front of you and for most who understand the concept, um, uh, the, the, the anatomy of eyes, know why I have decided to sculpt the eye rather than draw it. Why the, why the circle was important to me when I first started off. So, every eye, and this is the number one rule for eyes. I think I'm going to spend as much as I can today on eyes. The eyes are very difficult and they're very, very important to me, especially for um, portrait drawings. Okay, so this class is essentially about portrait art. So I want you guys to focus today uh, more than you usually do. Eyes make or break a painting. Of course, human eyes. <laughs> okay. First and foremost, eyes are always spherical. Does everyone write that down? I want you to write it down. I really do. <laughs> People always catch me staring at their eyes. No shit. Okay, eyes are spherical. Number two. For every, for every, let's say, the eye moves uniformly. Its components are fixed. So, 
Does everyone understand what I'm saying so far? The eyes are essentially spherical. They move uniformly, in uni uniform, and their components are fixed. Components meaning the circle, and then the, the cornea, the pupil, the iris, and then the pupil within. They move in a uniform manner. If this cornea moves, if this muscle here moves, and the muscles decide to turn this way with a signal from the brain telling it to turn, please turn this way and view, this will move with it. Okay, the eye works in layers. Now, remember before how I told you shape, then form, then 3D quality, and then shadows, all that stuff? This is how I'm going to be marking your eyes. Okay? So, this is how I'm going to be marking your eyes. Do they establish a spherical quality? When they move, do they move uniformly? Do I see a uniform movement? When I say uniform movement, is there flow in the form? Spherical, do you maintain the shape? We can all be eye stalkers like Mandara, Madara. Okay, you guys focusing? I'm really, really serious about eyes. I really want you guys to learn as much as you can today. Sort of all over the place, and there's a lot to cover. So number one, eyes are spherical. Very basic. So what does it mean when they're spherical? When you paint them, they maintain the shape that they are originally were created in. Eyes are the only muscle in the entire body that maintain the same shape that you originally drew them in. So I know that there are layers. Layers, I'm going to get to that in one second. So uh, layers uh, require the you know, eyelids and stuff, but essentially the circular form remains. It's not a, a thigh muscle where we start off with a square and then slowly that square turns into a triangular square and then it gets attached to another circle which slowly turns into a rectangular circle and then we have different muscles working and then it slowly starts to droop down into a more of a circular square and then it gets connected to the crotch and the thigh bone connected to the... Okay. Anyways, it's not like that. The circle of the eye is an actual circular shape biologically. It's an actual circular shape. So when you maintain the shape, same reason why your body maintains the shape of the circle of the eye shape. Um, because it essentially has to follow an almost an almost obtuse a little bit more than 180 viewpoint so it has to maintain that circle if it was squared off you wouldn't be able to move the way you would that's why you can't move your leg in certain areas if you're not double jointed you can't move your legs in those um, um, in those directions because they're the joints are fixed the joints aren't 100 percent spherical nor are the bones behind it. There's bones behind it stopping the knee from bending upward. So you know why you can lock your knee? Your knee can't bend upward. Some people can if they're double jointed, meaning the joint is um, corroded on one side as much as the other. Not corroded, but shaped one side as much as the other so that the, the, the joint itself can move in, a, in almost like a 280. Um, but the eye, uh, but that, that can't happen. It locks because there's a, there's a point of, there's a stoppage. But in the eye, it does stop, but it stops in the areas where essentially you can't see even if you were to be able to move at 360, you just see the darkness of your brain. <laughs> so there is a large amount of movement capacity that you have to show in your drawing. You have to show that this eye, wow, this eye can move. If this eye was given the breath of life, it would be very, very good structure. This is how I imagine it. I imagine God created the body and then breathed life into it. And I think that's exactly how we, we say it. But essentially why I say God is because I'm trying to think like an artist here. I'm trying to think like as if I was making a body, human body, would I breathe the, the thing in or would I create the function and then create the movement? So right now I have to I have to create the function. I have to meditate on the function. I have to imagine this has to move one day. Okay, so this is what I'm going to say. when This is what I say when I... Um, this is what I mean when I say moves uniformly. Can it move if this was real? Would this be able to function the way an eye can function? Do you guys understand what I mean? And by drawing the circle, it's not just drawing a circle and say the eye is circle shaped. It's drawing the circle and saying 
that this circle has the capacity, if life were to be breathed into it and it would have the third dimension, it would work. It would be able to function. You have captured the function, which is essentially what I mean. Have you captured the function of the eye? Which is essentially, what's the function of the eye? What does an eye do? So what does an eye do? I need, I need some suggestions from people. So watching turns, okay, so moves. Does it turn, or how does it move? Be more specific. So it moves, it turns, but what is the turning? What does it look like? It sees light, so focus. Excellent. Focusing light on the retina. Okay. So muscle within muscle. So what is it does? It sees. Let's just say sees. Possibility to survive while walking. Okay, so it yeah, it will seize. Um bundle light rotate. I'm talking about function in the biolog not in the not in the internal biological sense. I don't want to know about your circulatory system. I want to know about what the muscles do and how the circulatory system helps. But not the circulatory system itself. Do you understand what I mean? There is a certain biology that we have to understand as artists, but not 100% of the biology. Some, some of it is just jargon. So it moves, it focuses, meaning that it, it, this, this, imagine there was a line sticking out of the pupil. This would have to be pointed on an object. That's what they say. That's what we mean when we say it sees, focuses. Okay, so this helps you later on when you try to create eyes that look like they're looking at the same thing. Remember, eyes don't look, this is the eyes, and from the bird's eye view, eyes don't look directly this way. If this was the object, eyes would look like this. Why should this move? They've, and that's why you can move one while not moving the other, because sometimes you're going to need that flexibility. So if eyes focus. Essentially, they see they have to focus on an object. Um, adjust focus, make the eye looking in one direction. Excellent for space. Um, capture light, sees what it see that's what I meant. Possibilities. Okay, the dark hole captures light and shines it onto something that translates to the brain. Sorry, I forget definitions. It's okay. Yes, yeah, so there's a series of reflections. The information goes to your brain. Your brain deciphers the colors, and then your brain has the information. Your eye deciphers the shape, and your brain figures out the sh figures out the shapes. So if it sees an orange, it's going to say, "Oh, that's an orange," because of the color and the and the form. And then when your when your hands touch it, then you re-validate um, this the surface area. Okay, so an eye sees. All right. It moves uniformly. So if an eye sees and focuses, essentially those are the two things. There is movement this way and this way, and then there is focus. So movement and focus. An eye does an eye moves and focuses. What does an eye do? No, no space, it's okay. People go smaller when it's bright and expands when it's dark. Excellent, Nazir. Excellent little detail. Remember that. Moves and focuses. Okay. Now, when I say layers, so there's three three subjects that you have to that I'm going to mark you on if I were to see your drawings. First subject is the fact that it's spherical. An eye is essentially spherical. You start the eye as a sphere. It stays as a sphere. If I were to take my eyeball out and show it to you, it would be a spherical shape. It hasn't changed because its function relies on the shape. So I would write that down. Function relies on shape. Function is what? Movement and focus. Why didn't God make a circle and then make a square? <laughs> what, was, what would be the problem if we had a square for the pupil? Hi, hello. How are you? Vision will be weird. We couldn't move our eyes. No, no, no. The cornea, no, no, no. It could rotate. It still rotates. So we have the circle. So with the, with the white part is still round. But the inside part, what would happen to the inside part? 
if it was square, what would happen to the inside part? What would we have? Why does a truck have more blind spots than a Prius? What about goats and octopi? They see different things. They don't see, they don't translate light the way we do. We're, we're more, let's say, no peripheral vision. Excellent. But what does that mean? It would be shaded differently. Yeah, disrupted version, vision limited. Excellent. We would have blind spots. So to uniformly collect, so the, so the, the white part finds the object, moves, moves the object. So here is where you divide the function. So I talked about function, and now which does which? The, the, the white part of the eye here does the movement, movement, movement. It does the moving of the function of the eye. Okay? Now, here, this part, this pupil, the blue or the green or whatever color yours is, this does the seeing. Okay? Now, no shit kind of theory, right? Yeah, it's, 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 very, it's very basic. But when you're drawing and you remember this, this, this sort of breakdown of the way an eye is shaped and the way it works, it becomes so freaking easy to draw it, you'd think, why didn't I think of this before? And that's what happened to me. Um, I used to draw eyes in a very, very flat way. I, I never understood where to put light. I never understood how to how to shade it, how to, if, it, if it were to look this way, how it would be shaded, how the eyelid, I'm going to get to layers in a second, how the eyelids wrap around the eye. So here now I've broken down to you the two most important parts so far of how I'm going to be marking the eyes that you draw. First thing is, have you maintained the shape? Spherical. Have you maintained the shape? The, sh the function relies on the shape, so I'm going to need you to maintain the shape. Okay? I'm going to write that down. Function relies on shape, maintain shape. Okay? Does it move uniformly? So when I say uniformly, we go now into the seeing section of the eye. So the eye moves uniformly. Why? Because the shape on the eye, the iris, is stationary. It doesn't move. If you were to move your eye this way, the, eye, the, the cornea as well as the iris would move with it. So now that we understand that, we have to go into the, into the iris and break that down. The iris is also circular, surrounded by a black ring, sometimes surrounded by a black ring, depending on your genetics. Sometimes the ring is discolored and it looks like it's blue, but usually most of the time it's surrounded by a black ring because if it was completely colored all the way to the tip, um, then there wouldn't be then there wouldn't 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 represent that there's a hole inside the white part of the eye that wherein the reflection occurs. So it's more we're seeing the darkness rather than seeing the biological color. But the biological color is visible when the when the when the little lens inside the eye has a different color, a different genetic code. And then that's why we get blue eyes or green eyes. And they say people with blue eyes see more, see better. It's not really see better. They just see accurate colors because blue is the filter for the yellows because um, we naturally see yellows. That's why we have to use blue filters for magnetism of the star. Never mind. Okay, so this area here, we're surrounded by a black ring. I mean, we're, in which lies a black ring. This is sort of the focus. This increases and decreases, allowing in different kinds of light. Sometimes it wants to block. Sometimes it wants to shrink. So in order to allow more light so you can see more color, it shrinks so the more light works inside to deliver more information. If it's black, it doesn't really, so the muscle relaxes and this increases. It gets bigger. But essentially, all the seeing is involved in this. When this thing turns on a three-quarter view, so this is front view, three-quarter view, like an aperture, exactly. When it turns this way, this dark part doesn't get twisted. You know how when you see a circle, okay, let's, this is a circle from the front, this is the circle from the side, this black part doesn't get moved like that as this does. So if you're drawing an eye and you're drawing the eye from the side view, you're not going to make it look like the this part got squished too. You know in, in, in Harry Potter and in, in Prisoner of Azkaban when they have to go through the two double-decker buses and all their faces squish? 
Okay, when you see three-quarter views, the, the image looks like it's squishing, therefore you're seeing the side. You don't see the full um, circumference. Well, this thing doesn't squish with it like this. It remains a circle because it's inside. A portion of it twists and it sort of moves to the side a little bit because we see more of the inside of the bowl. Does everyone know what I mean? So here you have a bowl. This is the bowl from looking up down at the bowl. So you're going to have the base of the bowl, and the bowl is going to be filled with nice soup and noodles. Okay? All right. This bowl, if you take everything out, you're just going to have the center of the bowl. But when you move the bowl to a three-quarter view, you're going to have the rim of the bowl, and then you're going to have, you're going to see only a portion of the base of the bowl. The pupil is not the surface of the sphere. Exactly. I noticed that when looking at people. Why? Because it's inside. This is an actual bowl. The, if, touch your eye right now. If you can touch the black part of your eye, right now you're touching basically a really, really see-through layer of skin. You're not touching the black part. Um, this part is all, you know that little bump on your eye? Touch your eye, there's a bump. That bump is the pupil, the iris, correct? Well, that bump, if you were to take it out, you would have a hollow. So you have the circle and you'd have the hollow part and then you'd find the black part. That's essentially what they do uh, with laser eye surgery. They take out that first layer of, of that plasma, whatever it is, that membrane. They take it out and then they go inside and correct the muscles inside. And um, sometimes they install new um, I'm not really sure what happens, but they do install new objects that help the black focus a little better so you can see better. So, what happens, essentially, when an eye looks to the side? Same thing that happens with a bowl. You see a portion of the black part, which is called the pupil. Does everyone know what I'm talking about? Does everyone have any questions? Sorry, someone's on the phone in the other room. Good analogy space. I don't know about the death star very well. So does everyone know that now? Does everyone know what I mean? When this iris is at a three-quarter view, it twists to the side. We only see the bottom of the bowl. So we did do a lot of practice like this. A lot of the students that came before in my January classes um, did their own as well. Let me find some really good ones. Not sure if they're in this class file or in the other one. So essentially that's, that's how you're going to draw the eye. And it's really important to draw an organic looking eye, something that looks real. I don't want flat eyes. You can give me a flat nose without a lot of blacks, blacks for the nostrils. That way you make something look cuter. Remember that lecture that we had? You can give me a not so 3D lip, but if you give me a not 3D eyes and you're giving me 3D lips and 3D nose, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be seeing anything because I don't notice the, the beauty of the face without the eyes and that's me personally if other people find beauty in the lips um, because they speak or they express fine but I think eyes express way more than any any lip or nose can okay so essentially remembering this stuff is really important to drawing a lot of personality in your portrait work so that this class is about okay canvas head shoulders this is what this class is about this, this class right now um, I can go into full body, but full body, not going to need to focus on these little details. But if you're drawing a, a portrait and you're going to be capturing the person that you're drawing, remember this, the most important thing to capture. I mean, if you do really bad, like not really bad, if you don't work on the hair as much, if you don't work on the nose or mouth as much, if you work on the eyes, the person who you sell this to will be very satisfied. Why? Because you've captured their eyes. And if you capture a person's eyes and all the functions that go inside drawing an eye, you capture everything. Which is why I don't recommend 
being stuck to the anime style. Every anime artist, and they can give me anything, and if they don't, if they don't accept this, then they can go to hell. But every anime artist, um, every great artist that started off with anime understood that they had to let go of the anime eye. They could keep the anime nose, keep the anime mouth, give it a little bit of anatomy here to spice it up, but they knew that the eye, they had to make a complete 180 turn because anime eyes break all the rules. They're flat. They don't have um. They don't. They don't. They don't bend. In, and if they do have a bend in them, it means they're incorporating a little bit of, a little bit of uh, uh, reality into them, a little bit of anatomy. But they're essentially not a good place to be, keep yourself anchored. If you want to take it to the next level, understand what happens in anime. The only thing that really increases the size of the eye and the lashes, and that's why cute, cute people. That's why um, the cute little babies. Um, are essentially why everyone looks in, in Asia. I don't want to make generalizations, but essentially for them, the more of a baby you look, the more beautiful you are. Why? Because babies um, um, have a very cute eye, large eye look, which is why most of those anime girls out there, most of those celebrities, if you look at the celebrities in China and Japan, they're all big eyed, huge contacts, massive contacts, massive lashes. Um, and you'll understand what I mean. Um, essentially, that you can create the anime eye without the anime is what I'm trying to tell you. If you love the look, you can recreate it by just drawing a larger pupil, larger eye, larger lashes, um, giving a little bit more outline in the makeup. Um, okay. So, again, how am I going to mark it? Spherical, does it maintain the shape? Maintaining the shape means the function relies on the shape. Can you maintain the function? Can you recreate the function when you draw the eye? Does the eye look like it can turn? Um, what does the eye do essentially that you have to recreate for it to make it seem like it can do it? Um, movement, which is dependent on the cornea, which is dependent on the shape that you maintain. Is everyone following me? And focus, which depends on how you draw the inner pupil. And that's it, you guys. That's it. Layers, I'll get to those in a second. That's just how to put on, uh, how to put on lids. So is everyone following me? Yes, okay, excellent. So I want everyone sort of to... to <laughs> I want everyone to um, to sort of try to recreate that... Uh, this, this sort of like map that I made for you in your heads when you draw. So let me give you an example. My name is Space, and I will be drawing an eye today. Okay, I've, per I've impersonated you, Space. So, I hope you're okay with that. Okay, so I'm Space, I'm gonna go draw an eye. Okay, hmm, I really watched a lot of anime when I was young. So, I'm gonna try to get be inspired by when I was young and I drew so good. I'm just gonna act like I'm you. I, I know you probably don't. Um, oh my gosh, what did you do with Ista? What Ista? What are you talking about? There's my Ista here. What's, it's the it's the what it's the what actually I didn't okay I'm just gonna I'm gonna act like I did you did okay I hate you Photoshop all right so I'm drawing an eye I'm gonna try to draw without my knowledge of eyes okay hmm oh wait what am I doing oh okay. What did Ista tell me? Hmm. First thing she said was something about a shape. Okay, shape. All right. So the eye is circular. Okay. Is that too much of a circle? No, it's fine. Let me just make it a little bit ovally. Okay, I'm space. Space Gryphon. Gryphon. Whatever. Okay. Now what do I do? Um. Okay. There's another circle. What does the circle do again? What did she talk about it? Oh yeah, she said it focuses. So wait, this moves. What is it moving in? Um, well, it has directions. It moves this way and this way. So when I put the black on, I have to put it on a symmetry line like a pokeball. Get it? There's some things that I can't really teach you by talking about it. I have to do it while I talk, while I, while I act like I'm an artist learning. Not that you need to learn anything, space, at all. I'm not trying to insult anybody. So do you see how instead of putting it up here, I can put it over here, and still it can be looking forward, because it really depends on where 
um, the eyes end up looking and how I end up drawing them. Okay, so then she said something about layers. Act like I talked about layers already. Okay, so layers are up next. So how do I... Okay, so it's circular. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I have to put on the layers of the eyelid, the skin, as if I'm wrapping a wrapper around a circle. Okay. Okay, so this wraps around it like this. How about these parts here that I wrapped over? I'll erase them. And I'll represent them as the socket. Touch your eyes right now. Touch your eyes right where your eye ends in your socket. Try to put your finger in your socket. You're going to find that there's a bit of space there. You have to create that space. Create that space. <laughs> um, space. Um, by with a, with a suggestive contour line. Okay, so this part... The lid essentially hides away stuff that you have to represent through shading. Okay, I don't like how this looks. How can I make it look more like my anime style when I start it off? Okay, I'll make this bigger. I'll make the inside bigger. Bigger still. Hmm, I don't like how that looks. Let me make this part even bigger. Let me outline. Okay, what else does she say? Function. Okay, so function meaning that it can work if it was real. So let me try to make it look more real. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a general shade. Now what does she say? Crazy old woman. Okay, so shade it according to where it is. In the light. Okay. Shade that part because the white part, she promised that if I shade the white part, it'll look more real. So let's see if I can put it up the test. Oh, well, look at that. It all of a sudden had that another level of realness. Okay, so let me get a bit of white or a bit of lightness. I'm painting in grayscale. And she said to try to create the liquidy look of the surface. Try to keep the surface looking wet as it would. If it doesn't look anime enough for me, let me outline the bottom lashes as they would with eyeliner, the way she said that makeup is like painting a face. Okay, and then she said that lashes grow out not this way, the way they do in anime but along the lid which wraps around the eye in a circular way. Okay, so let me let me try that. Okay. But I like anime-ish looking eyes, so let me make them a bit bigger. And I have to shade the top lid. The top lid is shadable. Shade this part, shade this part. Put in my favored eyebrow shape according to where the jaw, I mean the bones are. Okay. Well, what do you know? Mr. Brack, the old fart, knew what she was talking about. Sort of. I don't want to sound cocky. Okay. Draw the lid, and there you go. Does everyone know what I just did? I simply followed the rules of function. This, if you keep rendering this eye, is going to look a lot better. I promise. This is f a couple seconds. Um, maybe a minute, two minutes. If you guys worked on this for an hour and you understood the function that you were drawing, you would have an amazing looking eye. You would have personality. I'm the old fart. <laughs> uh, that's the best. <laughs> Space. That's the best. It is. It is the best. I mean, not me. Not, not you, but for me. <laughs> uh, okay. So does everyone know what I just did? If I were to be marking this the way I told you here, spherical, even though it is generally very crappy eye, no offense, space, it's just my, um, um, the space, uh, the, the shape is there, okay, what else? 
Does it maintain the shape? So does it maintain the shape? Shape, yes. What I mean by maintain the shape is, does the eyelids wrap around the circle? Do they break the circle form or do they work with the circle form? Sometimes you draw the eye, but then you draw the lids like this. Okay, like a like a Peter Griffin or kind of look. I don't know. <laughs> God, I hate Peter Griffin, fat bastard. Okay. So, um, <laughs> for a face. Okay, so that's what I mean by maintain the shape. What does it mean when you maintain the shape? Um, the lids, when they wrap, when you draw the eyelid, the eyelids wrap around the circle of the eye in a circle way. So what does that mean? Again, I'm going to repeat it one more time because I really, this is essential. Maintains the shape. Circular shape. Not like this. Like this. Okay, so when they close, they close like this. My Rambo is so adorable. When her eyes close, they look like this, my hamster. How could, like, it's so adorable, like, in her little nose and her big cheeks full of food. And when she sleeps, she looks like a big ball. And she's got her little neck and her eye and her ears fold back. And she's got her little nose and her little hands. And she's got her little seat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. That's what I mean. Oh, Rambo, you adorable little fucker. Okay. Second is moves uniformly. When it moves, does it move in uniform with the shape? So, the anatomy is when this eye moves, the circle is put on the zenith of the eye the pupil. So if this eye were to be from the side, this would be the pupil. So essentially, this is the high point. This is the highest altitude point of the eye. So the hair is right here. Okay, so you draw this one line, vertical line. Then you draw the horizontal line. Horizontal line doesn't look like, doesn't look like this, doesn't look like this. It looks like this. It bends with the eye. Okay, then what happens? If this is the high point, it means the lashes Pay attention now. The lash, the, 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 the eyelid, has a high point here. A lot of people do this. The high point sometimes for them is over here. So they draw an eye. One second, guys. Okay, so some people sometimes they draw the eye here. And then they draw it like this. This is a stylistic little gesture, let's call it. Sometimes people want to put the eye in this direction. But this is not a realistic looking eye. This is what anime does. It always has the same high point. And the eye shape isn't spherical, it's flat. And the eyebrows are just eyebrows. Okay, that's essentially what anime is. This is a very flat shape. The shape is uniform all around. But here, in realistic eyes, eyes that look like they're fatty, okay, there's fat involved, meaning the fat of the eyelids moving with the surface changes, the surface altitude changes that I'm talking about here. So if you were to draw the eye here, just similar to this one that I just drew, okay, this is the high point. Where the pupil is, is the high point of the eye. Everyone write that back to me. Where the pupil is... Rambo. My little Rambo. Guys, don't remind me of her. So distracting. Okay. All right. So if I'm if I were to draw the 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 lids of the eyes, if I were to draw the lids, the lid, the high point of the lid would be on the area where the high point of the eye is, which is the altitude. So if the eye were looking all the way here, One second. Okay. So if the eye was looking all the way in this direction, looking all the way to the side, the high point, where would the high point be? Same rule. The high point would reach 
this direction. Look to the side and look at how that happens. The high point is still around the the the, the, the essentially it's still around the shape. The lids too have to respect the white part as much as they respect the um the, the okay, basically the eyelids are on a circle. So they're gonna be circular all around. It doesn't matter where the eye is looking, that's still a circle on an underlying. But the eye sometimes when it looks another direction, it pushes the eye I um the eyelid with it. So essentially this is it right here but then it moves up this way. So it hides this corner so it doesn't come to a close. Okay, so remember that wrapping, which is what I mean by is the, is the shape consistent? Is the movement consistent? Okay, now, is the shape consistent? Again, when I draw the eyelids, circle, 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 three circles, open parentheses, close parentheses. What happens when I do these two? I'm left with this and this. A lot of you, a lot of you don't know, and I'm going to bet my pants on it, a lot of you don't know what to do when you're at this stage. Most of you don't know what to do when you're at this stage. Here and here. Some of you ignore this stage completely. You don't even know that you're doing it because it, it, it you don't know what to do when you have those two parts. You don't know how to shade it in. So what you do is you shade in layers. Pants in English, English, or American English? I bet my... Is there any other kind of pants? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so what I mean when I say you don't know what to do is you don't do this. You don't know that you should be doing this. Erase, erase. Window stays open but we still have to suggest the, the framing. No, pants meaning my pants, my jeans. <laughs> okay, what you do at this stage, listen everybody, what you do at this stage, you shade it. Represent the socket line. Are there folds? What kind of eye is this? Is this a hooded eye? Is this an open eye? Is the socket generally deep? You have to shade. Look at how I shaded it here. It's very cartoony, but look at how I shaded it. Shade this part and shade this part, which is what I drew here. Look at your eyes. Look at the slits of the eyes where the window opens. And then around you're going to find a line on top, which is called the crease. And the line underneath, right close to the eye. Usually it's in this area. I like to draw it in this area here for makeup's sake. But the second line underneath that you're looking for is down here. Okay. Britches. Yeah, britches not, I think so. Okay, so what you do, you guys, when you reach this stage in drawing an eye is please don't forget to shade. What does shading do? What mark are you going to get? You're going to get, does it move uniformly? Does it flow in form? So meaning, you, saw, you see how I shaded this part of the eye here? I'm going to shade a bit more. See how I shaded this? It looks like eyeshadow. Why do people put eyeshadow on? Why do girls put eyeshadow on and not men? Well, girls want to look prettier. How do you look prettier? You make your eyes bigger. Shrink your nose, expand the size of your lips. Period. That's it. That's beauty. That's all it's ever been. That's all it ever will be. For different, gener for different areas, sometimes the nose is bigger. Sometimes the nose is smaller. Sometimes the lips are smaller. But the eyes always, the eyes have always been important in every single generation from history. The eyes are the sign of beauty, which is why girls use eyeshadow, which is why I'm wearing eyeshadow on the corners of my eyes. It makes the eyes look more beautiful. So essentially what you're doing, you're making the eye look bigger instead of smaller. When something is bigger, the shade that it, that, it sh that it sheds is larger. Okay? So that's what I mean. Use shading to represent the parts that you didn't know how to draw, which is these two square areas that I showed you. Okay? All right. Industry asked a really good question. What if the eyes are looking down? If the eyes are looking down, the what happens? What are the eyelids for? So I'm going to get to the layers now. I'm going to get to the layers section. See this layers here? I'm going to get to that. What happens when the eyes look down? Okay, when the eyes look down, it moves the lids. 
If the eyeball moves, it moves the lids. Yes, it does. The lids move. When the eyeball moves, the lids move. Of course they do. Look at how your lids move. When you look to the side, your eyes have to be opened a bit more because the corners of your eyes are more closed so you see less. Look to the side right now by just moving your head. Look at one object, but move your head um, from side to side as if you're saying no. Do you see how you see less? Not only because of your nose, it gets in the way, but because there's that you see the lashes. That's because in order to see completely full, you have to open your eyes because the corners close it. Okay? So the lids. Okay. If they look down, if the eye is looking down, what happens essentially? There's two reasons why the eye could be looking down. It could be head um, um, industry. Did you want me to talk about the eye looking down um, face forward or from bird's eye view? This one is more complicated. Right now, as far as this class is going, I'm going to be working only on front view. I'm not going to be working with three-quarter view uh, um, or bird's eye or worm's eye views because I want people to be able to draw the front view. It'll get them to their commission status that they want if someone ever offered um, a commission for a front view. So I want to, I want to help you guys as much as possible, um, as well as the commission um, contract that I've been working on for you guys, that you guys show your customers. Okay. Um, front okay all right so if the person was looking f down uh, downward from the front it would be halfway to close so what does that mean it means this eyelid didn't have to move at all when I look down this eyelid the bottom one didn't have to move it was never in the way what was in the way however one sec, let me try to I don't know why I made it a Persian style I love Persian style art, but I just have it. Okay, so circle, tear duct, tear duct. This is how I usually, same with my lips. You know how I draw lips? I'm um, corner, corner, and then I let the lips meet each other. Okay, well, same thing here. I draw the corners. I like to draw the parameters. Know the parameters before I infiltrate the camp. Okay, so try to remember these analogies that I give you. Corner, corner. Okay, eye is looking down, so what does that mean? That means, let me draw the pupil first. Iris, I mean. Okay, what happens when a bowl looks down? What do you see more of? Remember the bowl analogy. How do I shade, how do I put in the pupil part of the iris? The bottom, what shows? The dark area, what happens to the dark area? Tilts off to the front a little bit. Okay, did everyone see how I did that? Also shade some portion. You're only gonna get one side that's completely illuminated. If the light was coming up, this this side of the inside of this bowl is going to be illuminated. Of course this side is gonna be shaded because the bowl isn't allowing it to shade. But this side is gonna reflect on this side of the bowl and we're gonna have a nice little thing. Bowl, bowl. Bowl. If I were to ever say bull, bull, this, I would say bull, okay? Just to help you, I'm going to say a Russian style. If I were to say bull, I'd just say bull, because I know how that sounds on phone. Okay, so not bull, bull. <laughs> All right, so did everyone see how I did that? Let me go back a couple of... Okay, so I drew the under part of the bull, showing more of one side because the bowl has tilted towards the bottom. Do you know what I mean, industry? And then I kept the side of the bowl that we see more lighter than the side that we don't see. And then I added the reflective light from the side that we see on the side that we don't see. Okay, so let me just make that a little more shapely. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Next, at this stage, it becomes very, very, very easy to draw the lids. How do we draw the lids? So I went into lids too soon a minute ago. How do we draw the lids? We draw the lids by wrapping them around. The high points showing more. The high points meaning the altitudes that I showed you about. How the iris is high relative to the eye. It bumps like a bump. Okay, and what we're going to see is what happens if 
if, if something, if you have a circle and you have a perfectly round belt around the circle, the belt isn't going to have a tilt on it as if it was looking up or looking down. The belt is just going to be perfectly horizontal. Okay, so does everyone watch? Is everyone listening? When we draw an eyelid somewhere near the symmetry line, the horizon line of the circle, the lid is going to look like it's almost horizontal. Of course, it's going to have to meet the edges here, but depending on the kind of eye it is, sometimes it can even be straight if the eye is really, really proportionate and you have the tear ducts perfect to each other, but usually one tear duct is higher than the other. This tear duct is usually higher than this tear duct. So does everyone know what I did here? If the, if the lid was up here, then I would see the bend in the lid. Because it's all the way up here, similar to drawing a line on a circle and then moving the circle up, the line is going to look like it's bent. Okay? This line is straight, essentially, it's straight, but but what we did was we moved the circle in a way that bent the line. Yay, more place for eyeshadow. Exactly. <laughs> I love drawing eyeshadow. Okay, so you see this? All right. Then you have now a larger space up here. Remember that point when I told you guys you don't know what to do when you reach this point? Um, Esta, did you know that you can't see colors or shapes of objects on edges of your eyesight? Um... I already talked about that. Um, I just sorry, I just tested it. It's true. Um, we already talked about it. When the when the eyes are cornered, on the corner of the eyes, less light comes in. So that's why you have to increase the size of your eye. If you make your eye bigger, make your eye bigger in the atia and try that. Um, now you see more light. You see more in your periphery vision, which is the reds and the blues and the, you know whatever it is that you're seeing. But it is true. You don't see shapes, and you see very very little color. You see shapes. You see darkness, you see value, but you don't see color because there isn't enough refraction or whatever it's called going on inside the eyeballs. Okay, I'm going to shade it. So you shade it, exactly, space. Okay, so I'm going to erase some of it. I need, I need a little bit of, of guiding, right? I need a bit of guidelines. So I'm going to erase some, leave some, and I'm just going to shade along the ball of the eye. So I'm going to shade it as if I'm shading a sphere. Remember those circles that I sh showed you and you had to shade them? You shaded them like this. You didn't get the circle and shade it like this. And then this is the light part. No, you shaded it around its shape. This is what I mean when I say, does it maintain its shape? Maintain the shape. If it maintains the shape, it maintains the function. If it's looking down, it means that there's movement and there's focus. So what we have here is movement which is this part, the downward movement, showing that it's looking down. But the way we've made the focus look like it's looking at a downward area because of the way we drew the bowl. Okay. All right, so shade. I'm going to try to draw the eyelids. I mean the, the bends in the eyelid. So I'm going to use fine lines for those because they are essentially fine lines. Sorry if it looks really crappy for the class. I'm just trying to do things fast. I'm going to shade those lines. Okay. Get my sharpen tool. All right. And now I have to keep shading. I can't stop shading. I have to shade the white part of the eye too. The white part, no such thing as a completely white. It's either blue, off, offish blue, or an off yellow. It's never white guys. So it means that there is a value in it. It means there is a degree of grayness. Okay, going to shade the areas that the light reaches, which is this area essentially. Okay. And now I'm going to get a darker black because I need a darker one. I'm going to make the inside darker so I know how much value I'm working with. Make the lid a little bit darker. Make the this outer part of the lid a little bit darker and then draw the lashes. Remember the lashes are are not visible in their in their, all their glory. They do break um, length when we draw them looking down, so they don't hold their ground in this kind of angle. All right, what's next in shading? This upper eyelid has a shadow. I need you guys to write that to me. 
Again, the upper eyelid has a shadow. Um, what are you talking about? Shade up, baby. Can you can you guys help me with something? My tablet doesn't detect the pen. I don't know what to do. Um, Sophia. I'm using bamboo from Wacom. It doesn't detect the pen. Um, please upgrade the drive. Delete. Um. Uninstall drivers. Install new driver. What is wrong? And um, uh, update USB drivers. Those three things. If you fix those three things and it still doesn't work, there's something wrong with the pen. Okay, so upper eyelid has a shadow. What does that mean when I put that into paper? It looks like this. Shadow. No, that's too dark, sorry. Shadow. Shadow. Okay, and this is what happens when an eye looks down. If you want to make it look more down, same thing. Circle. Deeper bowl. almost look like they're closing. Eyelids do all the work and this area is mostly um, lids. Looks like a weird hat. Um, space, you asked about how to draw eyelids, um, eyelid folds. Um, go have fun with it. Everyone's eyelids are different and I'm not going to ask you to learn a formula about how eyes fold. I know I have two folds in one eye and one fold in another. Um, so I don't know, it really depends on it. And usually these folds are hidden in the crease like an like an organ not an organ you know those things that they're like this and they have handles on either side and they're like meow, meow, meow. I don't know what they're called xylophones I don't know accordion yes accordions um they just look like that when they fold and when they open how do you shade an accordion you shade some of the folds, but it doesn't look like one shape anymore. It just looks like a fold. Okay, and then move it up into the socket. Shade the socket a little bit more. I like a large socket. Please, nobody play with the way I just said that, okay? Um, okay, let me get the shadow in of the eyebrow. I like drawing the hairs of the eyebrow too. I love that. Okay. All right, and then I get my light color. My light color um, industry. You have a bit of a makeup um, passion, I see. Where do I put this highlighter? Where do you usually put highlighter industry when you put makeup on? And how does it help us draw an eye? Sophia, you already tried all of those things? Oh, Fizia, thank you. Reading tear duct on wrong side. Oh, you are? Sorry about that. Because I haven't used the whites yet. Damn Photoshop. That should be a little bit easier now. Hi, Lama Looks. On brow bone, excellent job. On the brow bone. So, brow bone meaning, I think that's a little better for the tear duct. If I know that's way too high. Up here. This is where I would put highlighters. This is where most of the light would reach. Look at how 3D things look now. A little bit on here. And especially a lot on the lids. A little bit of illumination or water, a little bit of tear ducts, water, 
Hi, 1000th Summer. You had something to show me, yeah? Can you send it to me on Skype, please? Latecomers, everyone glare at them. Isn't it, wasn't it 100th Summer last time? <laughs> I remember 100th Summer. Now it's 1000. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, you changed it. Okay, Mitsuya. Send it to me. Send, send, send. So does everyone see how I did that? And then I would just, if I want to connect it to the cheekbones, I would don't go on this direction. Take that down. That thin layer under your eye would also have a little bit of light in it. Cheekbones. Where do you put, where else do you put highlighters, industry? God, I love when people know about makeup. Girls have an edge over us in this lesson. That's unfair. <laughs> Where do I put highlighter? Where else do you put highlighter? When you put makeup, you put highlighter on the tops of your cheeks, on your cheekbones. Why? To make it, exactly, industry. To make it look like it's more, like you have bigger cheekbones. Because bigger cheekbones means more beauty. Okay, so that's where you're going to do it too. Trust me. I'm going to put it up here. This helps you move down. What else do we use on our cheeks? We use bronzer and blush. These are usually a shade darker than our skin tone so that they can show. If we just put our skin tone, what are we going to see? So this is also one of the little tricks that you have. Not Even girls who put on makeup don't don't really focus on, they don't really think artistically. So you have to start thinking artistically. Makeup is just another way to do it. Men also put on makeup, <laughs> at least in this generation, in these generations. Um, old and young. I swear to God, this one time I was on a bus stop and I saw this guy. I think it was a gay parade time in Toronto. And I saw this one guy on the bus and he had the nicest eye makeup on. I was actually going to go and ask him, but I felt like a complete... I felt like the guy. I felt like I was going to be complete, like, I don't know. I felt like, I don't know what I felt like, but I didn't want to ask him. I was like, oh my God, he looks so pretty. He had like the sparkly, deep, deep, deep blue color, a navy sparkly eyeshadow on. Looks so good. Okay. And that's where cheekbones go. And this looks like I'm drawing, so essentially what this line here, this part here, this is to show the inner eye socket, the, the eye bag. Let me tell you this, adding that eye bag underneath the tired lines makes the difference between a girl and a woman. If you like drawing a woman, don't forget gentle wrinkles. Yeah, I live in Toronto. Yay, me too. You did? I don't have me too. Oh, you sent it by email. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yes. I made the best bologna sandwich today. Sorry. Okay. So don't forget the luggage, <laughs> exactly. Excuse me. All right. So this is the little baggage area. This is the plane. These are the wings. Okay, and then when you shade eyebrows, try to use a slanted brush so that you can create the image of downward moving strokes. And take a little bit of that highlighter under the eyebrow. And there you have an eye. Is everyone on the same page? Okay. We talked about function. Spherical. Maintain the shape. If I were to mark this eye, I would say, number one, spherical. Maintain the shape. The eye is a ball. And that has to stay a ball. Things that go on it have to represent a ball. If there are lines on it, they have to wrap around the way they would wrap around a ball. 
Maintaining the shape means that the movement and the focus are the function. And they can only occur, the function can only be consistent if the function, if the eye shape is consistent, if it stays a circular, uh, stays circular. If it, if it becomes a square some, some, somewhere near the, near the corners, then that's not a very easy to function eye, sort of. If you were to breathe life into that eye, it wouldn't be able to blink very well, be like, uh, uh. Same with programmers who, who, you know, are testing their program. They notice that different inconsistency with their program. So, um... So they have to test it. So imagine you're testing it, and then you, you see what I'm talking about. Okay? All right. So function relies on shape. Function relies on shape. Function relies on shape. Movement is the part of the function, and focus are part of the function. Moves uniformly. Everything that wraps around the eye has to wrap around circularly. It has to reestablish the shape. Components are fixed. If the if the eye moves one way, the eyeball. If the eyeball moves one way, it the the iris and the um, pupil move in that direction as well. If the eyes look th somewhere else, something happens to the la um to the eyelids. If the eye looks to the left, the eyelids move to the left. They wrap around a left-looking eye, meaning that they wrap around differently. Because remember, if an eye is looking this way, if the eye is looking here. Let's say it's looking in this direction. Um, there's corners here. There's not going to be much wrapping. So what happens, a little bump occurs. Because this part here is one big circle. If you were to see it on the side, you'd see a ball. This is this part. Okay. This part makes everything on it bump. So if, this, if these were the lids, the lids would go around this way. Okay, what else happens? This looks real, why? Because the upper lid has a shadow. Don't forget it. Okay, so who's going, who's going, we'll be back, who's leaving? It's going to be hard reproducing this, but we'll try. There is no try, do. Yes. Function relies on shape. <laughs> Space is so funny. <laughs> and it interterrestrial the lens is a dome on the eyeball yes like the Google Google Center in Toronto Toronto Roger Center Google did I say Google Center oh my god Roger Center some Canadian okay what else did we write Skype it to you, email, Skype, Skype, Skype. Okay, and the layers, just the best. technically means layers of uh, the accordion thing that I told you about here, and the lid. That's all I mean by layers. And if you know these three principles, sphericals, layers, and the, and the movement, the function, um, you guys will draw the best eyes. Okay.